college basketball poll. We have several streaks on the line as well. Xavier is currently on a 10-game win streak. The Muskies also have a 20-game home win streak on the line. They have a lost here at the Gardens over the last two seasons. The Bearcats have a streak of their own that they would like to keep alive. They have beaten the Muskies three straight times. In fact, the man to my right here was the last man to beat them in overtime three years ago. Jamal Walker, Terry Nelson, thanks for joining us tonight. Obviously, you have a favorite Crosstown shootout moment. Let's talk to Terry Nelson here for a second. What's your favorite moment? Uh, when the buzzer went off, when we finally won the game here two years ago after I made that bold statement. <laughs> yeah, we talked earlier about that so there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of promotion involved with this. Is that overblown? Uh, it's not overblown because this is a big game. It means a lot for Cincinnati since the simple fact there's no pro team here. And uh, with the Bengals having a uh, not-so-good year and, and the Reds not having a good year, this is like all the Cincinnati has. And your association, obviously, with Xavier is something you cherry. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a good program. You know, everybody thinks it's a rebuilding program, but it's always been a good program. Good history behind it, and I think they're playing well right now. It's going to be a great game tonight. Okay, gentlemen, stay with us. Now, for more on tonight's matchup, let's go courtside to John Popovich and Gary Massa. Gentlemen. Thanks, DJ. Good evening, everyone. Come on in from the cold. It's going to be hot here. Gary, Denny mentioned that the Xavier Musketeers are riding a 10-game winning streak. Yeah, John, you know what? They're doing it mostly with defense. Take a look at this. 10-game win streak. They're, ever, they're holding their opponents to just 62 four, four points a game and look at that they're holding their opponents under 40 percent from the field meanwhile the cincinnati bearcats are kind of mr inside mr outside they're banging the boards good and they're hitting some key three-pointers yeah john and that's two keys tonight look at that they're averaging almost seven more rebounds a game than their opponents and the other th musketeers are going to have to contain them down there the other thing is they shoot almost 21 uh threes a game and, and they don't just shoot a lot of them they make a lot of them they make almost 40 percent from three-point range the musketeers are going to have to defend on the perimeter for cincinnati underneath a key guy a lot of people already have heard about maybe they haven't seen him it's antonio wingfield only a freshman but he's fabulous just a fantastic player came in with a lot of accolades there you see it he's starting to live up to him 17.3 points a game 10 10 rebounds a game and look at this it's just kind of surprising he shoots 48 percent from three-point range meanwhile here's a guy that we've been watching for four years and he just keeps getting better and we're talking about brian grant the senior center brian grant a little bit of frustration early had a neat knee trouble but he's come back he's averaging 16.4 points a game and almost 10 rebounds a game he was just named the mcc player of the week well this is one of the things that's on the line tonight this is the trophy the crosstown shootout trophy that's presented by the cincinnati inquires there's a lot more than just a trophy though bragging rights john i'm played in four of these games and it's as intense as you can get and it's even more intense now because both teams are ranked in the top 25 i can't wait we got the best seats in the house hope you all at home enjoy We'll give you that seat in just a minute. We'll be back with the starting lineups, the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout, right after this. For Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout between the University of Cincinnati Bearcats and your Xavier University Musketeers. And now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for the Bearcats of the University of Cincinnati. 6'8", freshman forward from Albany, Georgia, number four, D'Antonio Wingfield. A 6'5", junior forward from Brockton, Massachusetts, number 43, Curtis Bostick. A 6'6", senior center from Brooklyn, New York, number 32, Mike Harris. 6'1", freshman guard from Statesboro, Georgia, number five, Marco Wright. And a 6'2", junior guard from Toledo, Ohio, number 23, Lizelle Durden. The University of Cincinnati is coached by Bob Huggins. He is assisted by Steve Moeller, Larry Harrison, and John Lawyer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your Xavier University Musketeers. A 6'4", junior forward from Cleveland, Ohio, number 35, Pete Sears. A 6'6", senior forward from Hamilton, Ohio, number 34, Tyrese Walker. At center, 6'9", 
nine junior from Toledo, Ohio, number 54, Larry Sykes. A six foot junior guard from Canton, Ohio, number 25, Michael Hawkins. And a 5'11 senior guard from Cincinnati, number 12, Steve Gentry. Xavier's head coach is Pete Gillen. His assistants are Conte Stamos, Bob Gonzalez, and Louis Orr. And Tonight's Xavier game is brought to you by Skyline Chili, official sponsors of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. Also by your neighborhood Kroger store. And by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer, the home of the minivan store. Also by Provident Bank, everything you would expect from a great bank. And by the greater Cincinnati Honda dealers, featuring the all-new 94 Accord, a car ahead. Welcome to the Cincinnati Gardens, the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. And let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer, the home of the minivan store. For the Cincinnati Bearcats, you see D'Antonio Winkfield and Curtis Bostick at the forwards, Mike Harris at center, Marco Wright and Lazelle Durden at the guards. And for the Xavier Musketeers, Pete Sears starting in place of Ryan Grant, Tyrese Walker there at the forwards, Larry Sykes in the center spot, Michael Hawkins, and Steve Gentry at guards. Once again, Brian Grant not starting, and uh, you have a good explanation for that, Gary. Yeah, John, his ankle has been tender. He didn't see any action in practice at all uh, yesterday on Tuesday, so he's going to go ahead and sit on the bench. It's a team rule, no disciplinary action. He'll be in very quickly, I guarantee you. Certainly as significant as him not starting is the fact that Marco Wright is starting for the UC Bearcats. The Bearcats grab the tip, and this is Durden hounded by Gentry. Marco Wright with the ball over to Mike Harris. Michael Harris guarded by Walker outside to Wright. Wright over to Curtis Bostick. Outside to Wingfield. He gets his hands on the ball for the first time tonight. Larry Sykes picks him up outside. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Harris takes it and hits. Bearcats showing some patience on their first possession. Mike Harris, not a big score for the Bearcats, but he has the first two points tonight. Mike Hawkins scored 22 here two years ago in this matchup. Misses on his first try. Sykes follows up, can't get it. Rebound fought for, the Musketeers come away with it. Hawkins was underneath. Second chance for the Musketeers. That's a key to tonight's game is who's going to control the boards. And Sykes did a good job keeping that ball alive. He takes it outside to Sears. Sears a one dribble, puts it up and hits. Pete Sears looked like a cool veteran. Something for both teams. Both coaches mentioned that it's real important to see how they start. So many times in a game like this, the players can get too juiced up, too emotional. Got to keep the emotions in check. So far, both teams look pretty sharp. Two years ago here at the Gardens, the Musketeers fell way, way behind, and they just couldn't dig themselves out of a big hole. Right over to Bostick. Bostick moves into the paint, puts it up, gets the roll. Gives you an idea of the athleticism of Curtis Bostick. Hawkins tries a three. No good. Rebound Bostick. Marco Wright against Hawkins. Wright has played briefly in the UAP game, then came back against Dayton. Wingfield inside too hard. Rebound fought for, and the Musketeers get it. Pete Steers grabbed the loose ball. Gentry ahead to Walker. Walker goes up on the glass and in. This is the kind of pace that Pete Gillen likes to see. He wants it up-tempo. This is Wright fighting the pressure. Gets it across to Bostick. Bostick to Harris. Harris to Wright. Wright long, Durden long range with a three. And that is very deep water there. Lizelle Durden could shoot the three from three to four feet past the three-point stripe, and you saw it right there. 7-4. You see in the early going as Walker misses. Harris rips away the rebound. This is Wright working his way through into the lane, and Steve Gentry will get called for the foul. 
Steve Gentry's been a master at picking up the charges this year. There you see him with his eye on Marco Wright. Took a slid. He's going to get called for the charge. Steve leads the Musketeers. He's taken 19 charges in just 11 games this year. And I'm sure that's something that the, Mus that the Bearcats saw in their scouting report as Lizelle Durden comes over to the bench. Say something to Bob Huggins. Now he retreats back, joins his teammates. John, the fact that Marco Wright started this ball game gives you an idea. Of Coach Huggins' concern for the defensive efforts of the Musketeers. Their, their guards are very strong on the perimeter defensively, and Marco Wright is really UC's only true point guard. That's correct. They've used Damon Flint there at times. However, he had never played point guard until he was inserted in that spot, and Wright hits both of those 9-4. Bearcats in the early going, 17-13. Fans still filing in here to the Cincinnati Gardens, getting out of the cold. And a little chilly actually here as Gentry tries long range, and Sykes comes out with a rebound, takes it back in, fakes once, and gets packed. Larry Sykes is doing a nice job on the offensive boards. That's two offensive rebounds already for him. Mike Harris commits the foul, and I can see Bob Huggins over there saying you shouldn't have let him back into the lane like that. They have, you have to keep him up. John Jacobs comes in for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Mike Harris sits down, and that's one thing you'll often see about a Bob Huggins team. He won't take you out for missing a shot or doing something on offense, but when it comes defensively, if he thinks you could have performed better, he'll often yank you. That's right, that intensity better be there, and I'll tell you, nothing... Nothing speaks louder than putting a player on the bench and, and cause him to miss some minutes for him to start to listen. And you do see Bob Buckins and Harris frustrated at what just went on there. However, Larry Sykes hasn't taken advantage of it. He does with one point. Musketeer coaching staff told me they were going to try to pressure the fact that UC just doesn't handle the ball as well as they have in the past. Bostick trapped by two, gets it across and it's stolen. Hawkins. Hawkins comes down, puts up the three. No good. Rebound, Bearcats. So the Musketeers did half of what they wanted to do, and that's steal the ball. They just didn't capitalize on the other end. Wingfield outside, guarded by Sears. Bounce pass into right. He turns, goes over very nicely over Sykes. What an impressive move. Marco Wright banged off of Larry Sykes. Thought he hit a wall. Spun around and knocked the bucket in. An outstanding athlete is Marco Wright, also a very good baseball player. Sykes went in along the baseline. He's fouled by John Jacobs. And Pete Gillen has seen enough of action without Brian Granny. He finally gets Brian into the ballgame at about the 16-minute mark. Here comes Grant. You hear the roar from the crowd. Pete Sears did a nice job while he was in there. A couple key rebounds. Michael Hawkins also leaves. Jeff Massey comes in for the Musketeers. This is his first shootout. He's a junior college transfer. Native of Toledo, Ohio. Ball goes into Walker. Outside to Massey. Top of the key. And this is Gentry to Grant in the corner. Picked up there by Jacobs. Outside to Walker. 11-5. Bearcats. And a foul underneath. Jacobs committing the foul on Grant. And they have a few things to say to one another. Brian's a little upset at himself that he didn't go up stronger. I don't think he knew Jacobs was behind him. He thought he had it made. Musketeers with a nice possession. Good patience, good rotation. Got the ball inside to Brian Grant. Mike Harris right back in, and John Jacobs takes a seat on the bench. He wasn't out here long, but long enough to commit a couple of fouls. One of the big things that UC is trying to do is, is prevent Antonio Wingfield from getting any foul in any kind of foul trouble. So far, though, Jacobs, one of the decoys, is, uh, has already got two tagged on him. That's right. You won't see D'Antonio try to guard Brian Grant tonight very much, and, and likewise, Brian Grant will not be out on D'Antonio. Neither coach wants their star player to foul out. them both 11 to 7 1604 to go in this first half of play by the way we had reported earlier tonight on the news that there's possibility we might play this game with only two officials one had problems traveling in however he did make it here we have three officials Durden way long oh almost 
almost hit it. <laughs> that was way down there. Yeah, it really was. This is Bostic. One fake, two fakes. Goes up. Can't get it. Rebound Musketeers. Walker. Bounce pass. Yeah. Look at Larry Sykes. He's pumped up just like the rest of the Xavier Musketeer fans. Bearcats move it across. This is Harris. He'll try to defuse this crowd in a hurry as the ball goes in and a foul is called on the Musketeers. And I'll tell you, give the Bearcats a lot of credit. This place was erupting after the dump. They kept their mind on business and came right back. And they're going to the free throw line. But first, we're going to have a timeout here at the Cincinnati Gardens. 15-25 to go. 11-9 Bearcats. Recently, hundreds of cities across America were rated for business climate and quality of life. And Cincinnati came in number one. The best city in America. Welcome back, everyone. Cincinnati with a two-point lead, but with plays like this, Xavier closing in. There you see Tyrese Walker took a look and tried to hit the middle man in the break. If he saw his Brian Grant, decided to take it himself in a great bounce pass to Larry Sykes. He finishes it off with enthusiasm. Plays like this, getting the uh, 10,000 plus here at the Cincinnati Gardens, mostly blue and white. Pretty excited about this one. And Keith Greger comes into the UC lineup, and he had mentioned earlier that the, uh, the the guys just have to experience this game to know exactly what it's all about. He says a lot of these new players were really surprised that when they got in the conference, how intense things were. As Steve Gentry steals the inbounds away from Lazelle Durden. Gentry over to Massey on the wing. Inside the Grant, back outside to Sykes. One dribble. He gets it back to Grant from the side. A little bit too long. Fight for the rebound. No whistle. Durden comes away with it. Durden comes down. Thought about it. And throws over to right. Now Winkfield picked up by Sykes. Knocks him down. Takes the shot. Larry was looking for the call, didn't get it, and fighting for it. Bearcats doing a good job on the boards, but they missed. Pass ahead to Sykes. Sykes, tap pass to Massey. Massey goes in. Bob Hoggins is not happy. A lot of bodies on the floor, and there's a, a walking call against Antonio Winfield. That could have probably even been a walk or a charge. Steve Gentry set up beautifully. Winfield crossed center court, didn't see him coming, and... Uh, I'll tell you what, Gentry took a blow there in order to make that one happen. He's a tough kid. I'll tell you, I asked both coaches before the game, what, what, give me a word to describe Steve Gentry. Both of them used the same word, it was warrior. Meaning the guy's got an unbelievable amount of guts. He's the leader of the team. He's their defensive catalyst, and you saw why right there. Bob Huggins not real happy with the physical part of the game so far. Damon Flint comes into the lineup for the Bearcats. This is Massey, top of the key, picked up by Damon. Out of Woodward High School as Tyrese takes it in. Tyrese, oh, almost had it. Taken away and ripped away by D'Antonio Winkfield. You see his presence on the boards there. Durden bringing the ball up now. Guarded by Gentry. Durden takes it inside, pulls back, takes it up, rebound Grant. Furious pace here at the Gardens. Ball down to Sykes. Sykes puts it up. Great pass ahead. Just talked about Steve Gentry. Great job of defense on Lazelle Durden. Gets the ball and then looks up field. Great assist. First lead of the ball game for the Musketeers. 13-11 with 13.50 left to go. And Bob Huggins wants a timeout. He has seen his Bearcats fall behind for the first time tonight. 13 to 11, 13.50 left in the first half. Back to the shootout, folks. Jamal Walker, I thought this pass was a little ill-advised. It's a little far up the court for him to be looking for Larry Sykes, isn't it? Basically, Steve's being a point guard, looking, keeping his head up, looking up. Larry Sykes running the lane. The big dog deserves the, the ball. I think he works hard for the boy. And the Muskies take the lead, 13-11, 13-50 left in the first half. John and Gary. Thanks, DJ. I think David Klingler wishes he could throw a <laughs> pass with such good touch on that one. 13-11, Musketeers, Darnell Burton into the lineup for the Bearcats. So it's Burton, Winkfield, Curtis Bostick, Flint, and Gregor now for the Bearcats. Bostick throws the ball away. Massey picks it up. Chased by Gregor. Pass back to Tyrese. Explosion. 
Musketeers are on a 10 nothing run. And Mike Harris, who's been like a jack-in-the-box so far, up and down, up and down, he's coming back into the ball game after that. Flint to Bostick, they swing it around, Winkfield goes in, Pumps puts it up there, can't hit it, rebound pulled away by Hawkins. Hawkins hurries it down to Massey, Massey from the side, one fake, pulls up, got the roll. Now we talked about the Musketeers playing in transition and up-tempo. Pete Gillen has his Musketeers playing the way they want to play. 17-11 as Wingfield gets trapped around and fouled. It looks like by Tyrese Walker. Eric Edwards into the ball game for the Musketeers. And Mike Harris ready to report back in for the Bearcats. Bostick leaves. Harris comes in. Part of the way you want to get up tempo is to trap and press. And that's exactly what the Musketeers have done. They've been very physical so far. The referees have let them play. I'm surprised that that's the first foul that they've called in that kind of situation. Bearcats have turned the ball over four times, and the Musketeers have taken very good care of the basketball. They haven't turned it over yet. Harris guarded outside, and he's called for traveling as Brian Grant had those big long arms up over him. It's the fifth turnover so far. The Musketeers very aggressive in man-to-man. -man. Tyrese Walker gets a break. That's Pete Sears coming back in. Second time Pete actually started the game in place of Brian Grant. We mentioned there, you see, turnover, Cincinnati with five of the Musketeers so far, not frazzled, taking very good care of the basketball. Massey, top of the key, over to Grant, over to Edwards. He'll try from there, and he's short. Rebound hit Harris, and then picked up by the Bearcats, Damon Flint. Flint comes over, flips over to Harris. Harris to Burton, he'll try, and he's been red hot. Not this time. Grant fighting for the rebound, and <laughs> you see bodies flying, and right now the officials are not calling a real, real close game. Normally it would be to UC's advantage to play a very physical game, a very strong, powerful team. Musketeers to advantage so far. Sears outside, takes a dribble in, pulls up, he's short. Rebound Grant, Grant could go up, and he does! felt like controlling the board is going to be very, very, very important tonight. So far, the Musketeers are doing a number on the offensive rebounds. Foul is on D'Antonio Wingfield. That's his first of the night. John Jacobs, who has two on him, comes back into the lineup, and Mike Harris sits down. So he's been up three times, down three times, and uh, he's getting lectured. Grant hits it, converts the three-pointer, 20-11. Largest lead of the game for either team. At one point it was 11 to 5. Musketeers are on a 15 to nothing run. They almost threw it away there as the Musketeers keep up the great pressure. And Wingfield goes to the long range, doesn't get it, and the Musketeers have it back. Massey ahead to Edwards. Edwards to the side. No good. Rebound Wingfield. That could have been a backbreaker had Edwards hit that one. Jacobs outside looking for help, gets it from Wingfield. He's picked up there by Edwards. Back to Jacobs. Not in much of a rhythm yet, the Bearcats. It's Wingfield outside, a little bit too deep. Darnell Burton now. And there you see the 15-0 run that Gary talked about. Thrown away by Jeff Massey. During that run, John, the Bearcats are 0 for 8 from the field. Musketeers playing some very aggressive defense. Steve Gentry comes in for the Musketeers. Lazelle Durden reports back in for the Bearcats. 10.53 to go in this first half. Xavier with a 20-11 to 11 lead. This is Burton on the side right in front of the Xavier bench to Jacobs. He tries from three. He's off to the left. And the ball is knocked out of bounds and attempted to be saved, but it'll go the Musketeers' way. Bearcats are now 0 for 10. 0 for their last 10 field goal attempts. Good try by Lazelle Durden, who has improved his overall game. We've always known he's been a tremendous shooter, but uh, picked up his overall floor game, better ball handler. He's also the Steve Gentry type. He really is their leader. Massey from the corner, three! 
Jeff Matthew with that quick release. Bearcat defender couldn't get out in his face. Carson in the backcourt picked up there by Massey, who's playing with a great deal of confidence today. Had a very good game against Butler, and seems like he can carry that over. Wingfield breaks in, goes up and fouled by Edwards. It would seem like the temptation now for the Bearcats, especially for somebody who's as good a player as D'Antonio Wingfield, is to try to do too much now, because he sees not the ball movement that maybe he'd like, so let's take it inside, although right there he picks up a foul and stalls this musketeer momentum. Yeah, I think the danger you can run into also is to shoot the threes and try to get back in this thing real quickly instead of just chipping away, and I think D'Antonio did the right thing, put the ball on the floor, drew the foul. I think Bob Huggins would probably like to see him do a little bit more damage inside, maybe get Brian Grant in foul trouble also. Bostick comes in in place of Jacobs. And D'Antonio Wingfield is right on target. This guy's had two big, big games in a row totaling 42 points and 36 rebounds in his last two outings. All that on a slight stress fracture in his foot. And Bob Huggins told me the other day that he is playing hurt. He's not going to admit it, but uh, that foot is bothering him. And we have a whistle, and it'll be, I believe, a foul on the Musketeers. Michael Hawkins commits the foul. He got hung up with D'Antonio Winfield. Musketeers now showing Gentry and Hawkins, Sears, Grant, and Edwards on the floor. Flint passes ahead to Durden over to Bostick very quickly. He goes in. It's blocked by Grant. Brian Grant playing center field. Bearcats did a great job that time of finding the open man and attacking his own. That's what you want to do against any kind of pressure. Reverse the ball, rotate, and attack. Bearcats a nice job, but Brian Grant was waiting in center field to flip it away. Edwards leaves, Tyrese Walker comes in. Both coaches using quite a few players and the ball is knocked out, but Damon Flint, good hands, picks it up. Burton goes in, tries to jam, and gets fouled. What a quick baseline move by Darnell Burton. Woo. I'll tell you. This kid's gonna be a great player. Look at the pass from Damon Flint. Burton goes up strong. Burton, a player that Xavier wanted very badly out of Dunbar High School in Lexington. Uh, looked at Xavier, looked at UC, finally decided, well, let me try the Bearcats. And you know, it's interesting, Bob Huggins brought him in on his trip and came to the Crosstown Shootout at the Shoemaker Center. Bearcats had a great game. He liked the enthusiasm of the Shoemaker Center. Who wouldn't? And uh, chose the Bearcats over the Musketeers. 23-15, we're under 10 minutes to go. We've hit the halfway point and beyond in this first half. Tyrese Walker sees a lane now, shoots it back out to Hawkins. Hawkins to Gentry. Gentry over to Walker once again. Everybody catching a breather out there a little bit. Hawkins outside, thought about it, but good coverage by Burton. Walker tries a long three and got it. You don't see many of those from Tyrese Walker. He's only shot five this year. That's his sixth, and he's only made two. And he was a good foot beyond the three-point line. The split comes through, gets trapped, gets it away to Burton. Burton weaves his way inside, blocked by Grant, but grabbed by Durden. He comes up with the reverse and hits. Well, the Musketeers are getting away with a lot of physical, attacking, defensive basketball right now. Lazelle Durden with a heads-up move, picks it up, gets a stick back. Durden wide awake. Sears in the corner. He'll try. He got it. Inside the line at the two, 28-17 Musketeers. Pete Sears and Jeff Massey, two of the new guys for the Musketeers that have seen a lot of playing time in the last three to four games. Bostick working his way over, over to Burton. Bearcats getting a handle on their emotions and their game a little bit better. Jordan can't hit that. Sears with the rebound. Two on two. Hawkins takes it into the middle, takes it to the right. Now brings it back out to Gentry. Gentry to Sears. Sears goes in. Off the glass, no good. But a rebound on Grant. Again, the Musketeers with an offensive rebound. They're going to press some more. Try to get a trap. Fans on their feet here at the Gardens. Wheatfield working against Grant. Bodies go flying. Rebound Grant on his back. 
Ryan Grant with a rebound flat on his back. Not a wise shot selection by D'Antonio Winfield. Under eight minutes to go in this first half. This is Sears. Sears outside to Walker. Walker guarded by Flynn over to Grant. Grant tries to the wing. He's way long. Wingfield the rebound. Dirt picked up by Gentry. Flynn to Bostic. Bostic in the side. Gets help from Burton. To Bostic. Bostic tries the baseline against Grant and a whistle and a foul on Brian Grant. Now we talked about how physical things have been inside. I think the referees at this point want to try to get things under control. You see Bostic with a good quick baseline move. Brian Grant's going to be called for the foul for leaning in on the body. We want to remind you to stay tuned at halftime when we will bring you the Buick Halftime Report with more from Jamal and Terry. And after that, we will bring you our legends from XU and UC. DJ will have an interview with Hank Stein and Oscar Robertson. The Halftime Report is brought to you by the Greater Cincinnati Better Buick Dealers. Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. A couple of quality teams here playing, both ranked in the top 25 in the nation as Curtis Bostic goes to the line for the Bearcats. He's really been, Bostic's really been the backbone of this UC team this year. He's a veteran. He always draws a defensive assignment. He used to guard Ann Fernie Hardaway from Memphis State, Allen Houston with Tennessee. Did a great job against Robert Shannon with UAB the other night. Shut him out in the second half. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Xavier's owning a 30-19 lead. Recently, Welcome back, everyone. Xavier by 11, and let's take a look at our slam cam brought to you by the good folks of Robin Bank. See Brian Grant with some weak side defense. Help. Knocks it down. Lizelle Durden comes into your picture from the left. He's kind of right under your TV set. That's there right. he is. I want to mention that we did uh, take a camera shot a little bit earlier with the... Uh, some profanity on it. We apologize for that. We'll do our best to keep that from happening again. 30-19. We saw Brian, Musketeers. We saw Brian Grant with the block before on the slam cam. So far, Musketeers with four blocks. Bearcats without any. Musketeers in possession of the ball. This is Grant outside to Gentry over to Hawkins. Hawkins inside to Edwards. Edwards bounced to Sykes. Brian Grant has sat down for a little bit. The Bearcats are in a zone this time down. Edwards turns, can't get it. Sykes with a rebound. Goes back up off the glass and gets fouled by John Jacobs. Larry Sykes with a rebound. That's 15 rebounds for the Musketeers compared to 12 for UC. But most importantly, the Musketeers have 11 points on second chances. Keith Greger into the uh, Bearcats lineup. Also, Mike Harris is coming back in. Jacobs, who just picked up his third foul, seven minutes still to go in the first half, sits down. Bob Huggins told Lizelle Durden to sit down. That was your man. Lizelle did not rotate in the zone. Sykes uh, looked like he had jammed a finger on going back up, although he hits that one without any trouble. Kenny Harvey, the freshman out of Chicago, reports into the Musketeers lineup. This is his first appearance of the night. Michael Hawkins leaves. Uh, Pete Gillen saw the, the zone defense the, the Bearcats are throwing out there. Kenny Harvey, a good shooter and a great passer against his zone. Only a freshman, but he's not afraid to pull the trigger. This is Flint outside. Woodward and Withrow guy working against each other for a moment there. Inside, Flint goes up, and a nice follow-up by Curtis Bostic. You mentioned Kenny Harvey. He's not afraid to throw it up. Very confident, very aggressive. You look at him when he walks out on the court, it's kind of a, the intramural kid, but he's become a fan favorite for the Musketeers because he can knock down the three. This is Harvey on the wing, outside to Walker. They move it around. 12 seconds on the shot clock, and the ball is knocked away from Sykes' hand. Here comes Damon Flint. Flint takes it to the middle. Throws off to Burton. Burton from the wing. Misses. Oh, that thing was in, and it fell out. Harvey outside. A little bit too long there. 
brings it back to Gentry, lets him set up 33-21. Musketeers, we're at the six-minute mark of the first half. Walker on the wing to Harvey. Harvey a fake, takes it inside. Now looks for a way out to Edwards. Edwards had a chance to go inside, but elected to throw the ball out. Walker tries long. Edwards with a rebound. Goes back up and gets fouled. Another second chance for the Musketeers. It's not a shot that Pete Gillen wants the Musketeers to take. Tyrese Walker from deep down in three-point territory. Brian Grant back into the lineup for the Musketeers. And Jackson Juleson, another one of the UC Bearcats' prize freshmen, comes in for the first time this evening. Now on the lineup for the Bearcats, number 40, Jackson Juleson. Juleson for number 32, Mike Harris. First personal foul on Curtis Bostick. One of the most athletic guys you're ever going to see on a basketball court. Get a good shot of Coach Gillen. Interesting article in, in Inside Sports this month. Mentioned that he was a grammar school teacher in English for seven years in the New York City School District. It's maybe where he got his patience for coaching. Eric Edwards very unhappy with himself, missing two foul shots. Gregor takes the ball in the paint, puts it up there, can't get it. Rebound knocked away. Flint comes up with a loose ball. Damon Flint to Bostic. Bostic on the side, got it. Curtis Bostic with a couple of key baskets here, leading the Bearcats back. Now it's a 10-point margin, 33-23, 5.15 to go in this first half. Keep in mind, Xavier had the lead most of the first half in last year's game, and then all of a sudden, UC went on a 16-2 run in the last few minutes. Nick Van Exel hit that long half-quarter. Kenny Harvey is off the mark and almost knocked up there by Brandt, but the Cats come away with it. UC went into the locker room then with about a five-point lead. Flint passes off to Juleson. Beautiful pass by David Flint. Great execution by the Bearcats. Give and go, and Pete Gillen wants a timeout. 33-25. The lead is cut to eight with 4.45 to go. We'll be right back. Oh, we're back at the Gardens. Terry Nelson on his Providence Slam Cam shot. Describe what happens here. They're running the floor better. And this is exactly what Cincinnati needs. A transition basket with a lot of touches. Give and go. Damon penetrates. Every draws the defense. Jackson Juleson with the easy layup. They need more of that to stay in the game. And that cuts the Xavier lead to eight points with 4.45 left in the first half. John, Gary? Don't go away at halftime when Gary and I will take a look at the halftime stats and all the highlights. And that's brought to you by your neighborhood Kroger store. Four forty-five to go in this first half of play, and the Musketeers up thirty-three to twenty-five. John Terry Nelson's right. Bearcats did a great job on that last possession. Really handled the ball. Nice touch passes. Need more of that from the Bearcats. Pete Sears back in for the Musketeers. Over to Massey to Walker. Walker picked up there by Damon Flint. Must the Bearcats getting some confidence now as they're able to reduce that lead. Gentry looked inside, couldn't find Grant, played good defense for the Cats there. Massey out to Sears. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Sears penetrates. Pulls up. Damon Flint blocks it. And now it's a fight for the ball. Bearcats get it. Over to Flint. Rolls down his shoulder. And he brings it back out. Takes the shot. Misses. Flint with his own rebound and a whistle. I think he's going to call Steve Gentry out front. The Bearcats have scored six unanswered points. And I think a lot of it is because all of a sudden they're getting the loose balls. Musketeers are being out hustled this Second part of the first half, there you see David Flint just grabs that shot. Steve Gentry called for a, a reach-in foul. Musketeers on the court now look like this with Massey and Grant Gentry, Sears and Walker. The miss, but Flint comes away with the rebound to Burton. Burton gets a screen, goes around the right side, goes in, and another foul is called as he went to the board very aggressively. Once again, the Bearcats with a second chance. They came up with a, a loose ball, and young man right here, Burton, really get it done. Look at the baseline move there. Tyrese Walker all over him. Brian Grant with weak side help. One of 
of the things I like about Darnell Burton. He goes to the basket very aggressively. Took it right to the Brian Grant at 6-9. Brian Grant now has two personal fouls on him. And that is something the Musketeers will have to watch closely. And you know that Bob Huggins and his staff are watching that very closely, too. Pass into Walker. They lose it. Bearcats knock it out of bounds. It'll be Xavier's ball. Bearcats look to be a little bit more aggressive on defense now also, making it awful difficult for the Musketeers to pass inside. Sears back into Gentry. Gentry goes up, and it's blocked away. It'll be Xavier's ball. Thirty-three, twenty-seven. Lead is six. Three forty-two to go. In the first half. Darnell Burton commits the foul. That is his first. We want to remind you to stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game when DJ Gary and I will be selecting the Skyline Chili star of the game. Tonight we'll be selecting a star from each team and with that selection a $500 donation will be made out to the general scholarship fund of each school by Skyline Chili, the official sponsors of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. John, we heard there are 12 NBA scouts on press road tonight. A lot of them are here to see Brian Grant play. So far, he's not disappointing them. He's got 9.7 rebounds and two block shots. Playing a solid game since he entered at the 16-minute mark. Help the Musketeers right themselves with that foul shot. Pressure applied by the Musketeers, but they get it across quickly. Flint picked up by Massey. 35, 27, three and a half minutes left in this first half. Flint guarded by Hawkins. Flint trying to get it back out, falls away, and it is Bearcats' ball. One of the things that the Bearcats like to do is create mismatches. There you saw Damon Flint trying to take Massey, post him up down low. Flint over to Burton. Burton turns, fires, got it! Darnell Burton has been phenomenal for this team lately. And he made that shot over great defense by Michael Hawkins. Had a hand right in his face. Darnell Burton still knocked it down. This zone has been real successful for the Bearcats so far. Massey goes in, knocked away by Jackson Juleson. Musketeers have had a much more difficult time getting the ball inside, and then once they do, there you see the penetration by Massey. He's got the right people in place to play weak side defense. Juleson, only a freshman, has come in and made a couple of very big plays. Massey outside to Hawkins. Hawkins tosses inside to Grant. And the ball is knocked out. It'll be belong to the Musketeers. There you see Bob Huggins like what he saw that time. Good collapsing by the Bearcat guards. Helping out when Brian Grant gets the ball in the box. Hawkins, the inbound to Grant. And stolen away by the Bearcats, but stolen right back to Walker. Walker goes up, hits it, and gets fouled. I hope we have a replay of that because Tyrese Walker was fouling the way up. Lost control of the ball and then regained control in midair. Take a look at this. Great steal, Pete Sears, and then a great pass inside. Darnell Burton tries to scoot over and help. Look at Tyrese. He loses control, gains his composure, and gets the ball to go down anyway. Darnell Burton's second personal foul of the game. And Tyrese Walker goes to the line. There you see he and Brian Grant are the leading scorers on this Musketeer team. And Michael Hawkins uh, comes running too. But, uh, and for the first time tonight, Sherwin Anderson, little freshman guard out of New York, comes into the game for the Musketeers. And you see the crowd pick up. They like the way this guy <laughs> plays ball. He usually turns it up a notch. Sherwin Anderson, a lot like Jamal Walker. Durden crossed the ball stick off his head. Sears ahead to Anderson. Sears gets control of it. Now tosses back to Sherwin. Over to Hawkins. Hawkins inside. Grant goes up. Can't get it, but gets fouled. And Jackson Juleson knocked down the ball in frustration and probably is very, very lucky he didn't get called with a technical. I think the referees are trying to make sure that nobody gets cheated out of this game. It's such a great basketball game. You know, a young guy like that, too, wants to play so hard. He's heard all about this game. And he's and heard all about Brian Grant. He wanted to show him that he's uh, he's got some 
talent and ability also. Musketeers starting to hit their foul shots. Larry Sykes runs down to the scores table. He's coming in. He's going to replace Brian Grant. Not yet. Grant misses that shot. Flint grabs the loose ball. Two and a half minutes to go in this first half of play. Xavier by 10. Flint. Nice feed to Jolson, but taken away by Anderson. Anderson ahead to Massey. Massey goes up. Two-handed stop. Quick hands by Sherwin Anderson made that one happen. Bostic. Over to Burke to Juleson. Juleson goes up and unmolested goes off the glass. Two minutes, less than two minutes to go in this first half. They swing it around. This is Anderson outside to Hawkins. Hawkins to Sears. Sears the wing. Too hard. Rebound Musketeers. Good aggressive play. Hawkins thought about it, now bounces to Grant outside to Anderson. This is Massey into Sears. Nowhere to go for him to Grant. Grant from the side. He's too long. Bostic way up to get that one. Jackson Jolson's just a tree inside. The Musketeers got the ball inside but couldn't shoot over. Gregor with the open shot decides not to take it. And a jump ball that will go to the Musketeers. There you saw one of the things that a lot of Cincinnati people wonder about. Keith Gregor had a wide open shot on that side, and here's a guy that was a great scorer at Lakota High School, taking him to the state championship two years in a row, but it seems like his offensive game has left him. Uh, John Lawyer, the assistant for, for the Bearcats, I talked with him, and it's, his game has been a little bit of a mystery. Although he has been very steady in terms of defense, he knows their system real well. Offensively, it's been a little bit of a mystery. 110 left in this first half. Massey outside to Hawkins. 41 31 Musketeers. This is Massey. Let's fire. No good. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be the Bearcats' ball. UC held the early lead in this one, had a lead by six. Then Xavier went on a 15 to nothing run, took the lead and haven't given it up yet. And it's plays like this one that the Musketeers steal away. John, the Musketeers have really mixed it up with their zone traps. They've jumped on it. They play their scramble, their man-to-man. -man. They've done a lot of different things, and it has confused the, the Bearcats a little bit tonight. Sykes on the low post goes in, and Jolson with good defense knocks it away. And Lizelle Durden all of a sudden saw Jeff Massey, and in order to evade him, he traveled with the ball. I'll tell you, Jeff Massey's a guy that came in here with all kinds of accolades about his offensive prowess. And Pete Gillen is extremely pleased, a very pleasant surprise at how strong he is defensively. 35 seconds left in the first half of play. The Musketeers signal for one shot. That was the Bearcats' 10th turnover of the half. The Musketeers have taken a little better care of the basketball. They have just four. There you see the clock running down. Pete Gillen was trying to get Kenny Harvey into the game, but he goes and sits back down. This is Anderson. Five seconds to go. Anderson, nice pass, and the Sykes goes in. Can't make it happen. And it'll be the Musketeers' ball with three-tenths of a second left on the clock. One outstanding move by Sherwin Anderson. Harvey does come in. Look for him to get the inbounds pass and look for him to fire away. See if they set up a play for Kenny Harvey. Hawkins got it, lets it loose, and it'll be short. What a first half we've had, though. That is the end of the first half of tonight's game with the Xavier Musketeers leading the UC Bearcats 41-31. to Stay tuned for the halftime report with DJ and some very special guests right after this. 
the new symbol for quality in America. Welcome back to Cincinnati Gardens. Dennis Jansen here, flanked by Terry Nelson and Jamal Walker. As we bring you the Buick Halftime Report. To this point, it's been all Xavier 41-31. Well, perhaps that's not a fair characterization, Jamal Walker, but they have had the better of it in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I think they're playing comfortably. Um, made a few mistakes, but I think Xavier has um, a good lead right now. But they have to come out strong. The first five minutes is always important. UC's got to take better care of the ball. We see Xavier getting a lot of buckets off transition here. Yeah, UC is known for, you know, pressing a lot. Sometimes you always hear that saying that good teams don't like to be pressed. And, you know, as you can see, Sherwin Anderson, he just anticipated the pass. Looks Amul up for Jeff Massey while he's running the lane and two points. Of course, Sherwin Anderson emulating his idol, Jamal Walker. Not his idol, but, you know, from the, from the city. His mentor, his mentor. <laughs> Terry Nelson, what in the world's happening with the Bearcats here? A lot of easy baskets simply aren't dropping for them. Well, they have a lot of unforced turnovers. I mean, Xavier's come out with the press. Uh, that, that really hasn't affected them. They've thrown the ball away when they're in panic in situations. Uh, they've traveled when they get the rebound and outlet at the ball. So they're really uh, their own worst enemy. It seems to me that Bob Huggins is trying to shuffle his lineup, trying to get a combination, trying to get a feel for one another in there. Jackson Jolson was a late insertion, and he's responded. Yeah, Jackson Jolson is a good job. Who would have thought that he would have came into play and had some block shots? And here you have the go give and go play where Damon Flint goes in. He draws a defense, throws into Jackson Jolson. He goes up. I believe he has about four points and about three blocks. And again, UC is going to have to take better care of the ball. Yeah, take better care of the ball. There's no way in the world that you should turn the ball over when the defense is not really pressuring you to turn the ball over. Now, if they trap in you, then you and it's a plausible cause to throw the ball away. But when it's just one person, you should be able to take care of the ball. And Xavier has to realize the 10 points doesn't count for a whole lot at halftime of this game, Jamal. 0-0 zero, zero at this point right now. Thanks. That's what Coach Gillen is telling them right now. Thank you very much, Jamal Walker. Terry Nelson, please stick around for the second half. And we'll have some special guests when we come back. We'll have Bearcats and Musketeers from days gone by. Stay with us. Welcome back to Cincinnati Gardens as our Buick Halftime Report continues. I've been joined, as promised, by Hank Stein. Vintage 1958, Xavier University, Hank? A long time ago. Thank you very much. And, of course, Oscar Robertson is here. Oscar, the Bearcats out of sync here a little bit, to say the least. I think that's smelling up the place, Dennis. <laughs> You've been kind to them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not playing very good at all. Uh, Wingfield looks like his foot is still hurt, and, and they've taken a guard to the game up a little pressure. You know, they got three-point shooters, so what is... And Gillen did a smart thing. He picked them up, pressure them pressure all over the court. Don't give them those three-point shots. Hank, let's go back to the Crosstown shootout and the, the games of your era. I think we have some video here of the 1958 NIT championship game. This obviously establishes your credentials. Uh, you were the MVP of this game. Correct. It was. It's a different game. Would you agree? Well, it's a lot faster nowadays. Mm -hmm. And But still, the strategy is essentially the same. You have to block. You have to rebound. You have to shoot well. Well, I think the most important thing is putting the ball in the basket and having a high percentage. And also sharing the ball, playing as a team. Here's the end. Xavier's the winners. And here you are. You're the champion. Well, I mean, it didn't have a lot of superstars that day, and it uh, was a team effort. Look at Hank. Now, Hank. <laughs> Hank. That's about look... 40 pounds ago. <laughs> Stop it. You look terrific. You obviously have to be very gratified by what has happened to Xavier's program since. Uh, uh, Stack got it started, and Gillen certainly has taken it off. Uh, over the last years, they've done quite well. Uh, good NCAA participation. And uh, we need to uh, get in a league now. Or upgrade the league a little oh, bit. That's a shot. Now let's go over here. That A lot of people would say that Oscar Robertson somehow reestablished the University of Cincinnati basketball tradition into national prominence and now it's right back after uh, after a down period, frankly. Oh? Well, I think what's happening to UC right now is that they're without Nicky Van Exel. People don't, they don't really realize what a great play he was. <laughs> oh, God. Was that my son playing? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> what do you think when you look back, both of you guys, when you look back at this vintage footage of guys that were just terrific players, well-grounded in fundamentals and love the game. You know, myself, I don't remember playing very much at all. I mean, I've got to the point, I've forgotten all the games. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, I'm sure you remember these halcyon days from UC basketball history, don't you? Well, uh, when we were uh, in the late 50s, you weren't, freshmen weren't allowed to play. Mm -hmm. And being from out of town, uh, the game really didn't mean that much until you were like maybe a junior or a senior. But you uh, you picked it up real quick. It was an important game. And I think 
courtesy fellows like Terry Nelson who are helping us out on our telecast here tonight and the upperclassmen at UC, these incoming freshmen all of a sudden know the importance of this game and it is just another game in the big scheme of things but there is a, an inherent importance to this game. Well, it's, it's for bragging rights for the town and also recruiting rights as well but you got to win basketball games. I don't care what game it is, whether it's against X or against North Carolina, you got to get yourself prepared to play and, and, and I must be honest and frank and say UC is not playing very well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, they're lucky to be 10 points down. You know, I, they should be 20 or 30 points down right now. They have a lot of tremendous athletes here, but they just have got to do a little growing up. That, that's all paper. You know, you got to play when the bells when the bell rings. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say this guy can do this, he can do that, he can jump over the moon. But you get when the bell dongs, man, you got to get out there and get it done, no matter who you play against. Who do, who do you stay in touch with in uh, Cincinnati over the years, Hank? Eh? Well, Jimmy Booth is still in town. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Tordern's around. Uh, Actually, you don't see much of the guys. They normally, uh, they went their way, I went my way, so uh, we have a reunion uh, every now and then. Was this rivalry ever this heated when you were growing up? Uh, no, uh, I don't think it was. Uh, my hometown was Louisville, Kentucky, so I never really grew up with the rivalry. Uh, I came up to X in 55, and uh, of course the longer I was there, it grew on me, and it became quite an important game. Uh, Dayton was a big game. Uh, and the UC. And Miami was a big game back then. Those games seem to have been a lot bigger in the old days. So you're saying this thing has grown way out of proportion? Well, no, it hasn't. I think it's. I think the fans have done that. I think it's great for the fans. I think it's great for the ex-fans. You know, we talked before, you know, for, for the rivalry, you can't have every team to dominate the series. It's got to be a situation where you got to lose sometimes. But nobody wants to lose. But but for the fans, for the students at X and students at UC, they want to smell victory sometimes. And frankly, over the past 14 years, it's dead even. Seven for Xavier, seven for UC. Which is great. Thank you very much. Oscar Robertson, Hank Stein, thanks for joining us. We'll Thank have you, more Dave. with our Buick Halftime Report after this. Stay with us. And it's Louisville versus Xavier in the Dodge NIT at Riverfront Coliseum. Ten seconds remaining, and the score is tied at 83. Cardinals with full court pressure. Inbound. Walker gets the break back. Five seconds, four seconds. Walker inside, laid up and in! Walker to Hill gives X the victory and another memorable Musketeer moment. This Musketeer moment has been brought to you by Queen City Sports Medicine, the official doctors of the Xavier Musketeers. Cincinnati Gardens were at halftime. Xavier with a 10-point lead over the UC Bearcats by a count of 41-31. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics brought to you by your neighborhood Kroger score. First of all, let's take a look at Xavier scoring, and really, the two lead scorers are doing it, Gary. That's right. All year long, we talked about Tyrese Walker stepping up. He's got 10 points tonight. Brian Grant, of course, we expected a big game out of him. His ankle seems to be fine, and Jeff Massey's a, a big difference. He stepped up and threw in nine. Cincinnati scoring. Curtis Bostick, a little bit of a surprise there with eight. Burton with six. Durden with five. I guess the most surprising thing, though, is who's not there. Yeah, both of us looked at the halftime stat sheet and said, oh, my goodness. Antonio Wingfield just had two points, and I think you got to credit Larry Sykes with play, doing an outstanding job on defense. Taking a look at reboundings there. Brian Grant doing Yeoman's job on the boards as well. Larry Sykes and Michael Hawkins each pick up three apiece. UC rebounding, meanwhile, Damon Flint, who reported late into this game, has grabbed a bundle. He's a versatile guy. He can play that one and two spot, and he went inside and got some rebounds, too. First Bostic and Wingfield with just three. You're not going to see impressive stats here as we look at the team stats. I was looking at the paper earlier, and... Uh, Look at the shooting percentages. Nothing stands out there. No, nothing stands out. One of the things that I think does stand out, though, John, look at the three-point field goal percentage of the Bearcats. One of the things that the Musketeers had to do is play good defensive pressure, get the hand out on the perimeter, and they've done that, allowing UC to shoot only eight. They, they average over 21 a game, so they cut them down there, and, of course, they only made one. So good defensive pressure out on the, out on the perimeter. The other thing, look at turnovers. Bearcats with 10 turnovers. Musketeers doing a great job with just three, but that gives you an idea that they went on that 15 to nothing run in the midway through the first half, and a lot of it was due to that pressure. The pressure defense caused them to turn it over. Okay, 41-31 is our score at halftime. Xavier with the lead. Second half's ready to begin right after these messages. 1-2-1-8-6. Tonight's Xavier game is brought to you by Skyline Chili, official sponsors of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. 
Also by your neighborhood Kroger store. And by the greater Cincinnati Honda dealers. Featuring the all-new 94 Accord, a car ahead. Also by Provident Bank. Everything you would expect from a great bank. And by the greater Cincinnati Better Buick dealers. Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. We're back for the second half of the Cincinnati Gardens, the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. Xavier holding a 10-point lead at the half, 41-31. UC jumped off to an 11-5 lead, but then Xavier ripped off a 15-0 spurt. They took the lead. They took it. Uh, they've held it ever since. UC cut it back to six points on a couple of occasions, but here it stands at 10 as we get ready for the second half. John, I thought it was kind of funny. We heard uh, Oscar Robertson at halftime talking about the Bearcats just didn't play very well he, he didn't pull any punches musketeers had a good first half but we all know in a rivalry like this at 10 points is an absolutely no kind of lead anybody who knows oscar knows he doesn't sugarcoat things and he uh, even though it's his alma mater he said they kind of stunk up the joint steve gentry michael hawkins tyrese walker larry sykes and brian grant now out for the musketeers darnell burton Damon Flint, Curtis Bostick, Jackson Juleson, and Lizelle Durden out to start the second half for the Bearcats. Burton fires from the wing and almost had it, but Juleson with a nice follow-up. I'll tell you, that's one of the things Darnell Burton does. He spreads the floor because he's such a great shooter. Brian Grant had to go out and help. That left Jackson Juleson wide open for the stick back. Juleson, his third bucket from Grayson, Kentucky, a freshman making an impact here in his first Skyline Chili Crosstown shootout. They cut it to eight in the early seconds of this second half. And the Bearcats are opening up in that same zone. Have a whistle and uh, apparently had too much of an impact there on Brian Grant's back. They play a 1-1-3 one, one, zone that when you bring the ball to the wing, it turns into a 2-3. They had, a, they had a little bit of success with that at the end of the first half, so they, they bring it out again. We noticed Antonio Wingfield not in the game. you got to believe his foot is bothering him a little bit. Give you the foul situation to begin the second half. Brian Grant and Steve Gentry have two apiece. John Jacobs is on the bench, has three, so he's in the most danger. As Gentry fires long range, can't get it. He falls down. Durden grabbed the ball, but then he slipped. And a ball is swatted away by Tyrese Walker. Grant grabs it. Grant over to Walker. Boy, Tyrese Walker just came out of nowhere. Hawkins thought about it. Flint made him stop. Walker from the side. Can't get it. Rebound. Bearcats. It's taken away by Sykes, but it falls out of bounds. I think Jamal Walker touched on a point that this first five minutes of the second half is awfully key. Pete Gillen emphasizes it in the locker room. And look at, look at Tyrese Walker hurrying down and making Xavier's fifth block of the night. Flint gets a screen, tries from the wing, passes into Jolson, and he's fouled by Walker. But Bearcats playing a little two-on-two -two game. You see Damon Flint go up with a fake, and Tyrese Walker got his money's worth. Walker and Sykes collide, second personal foul on Tyrese, so he, Gentry, and Grant now have two apiece. Jackson Jolson continues to make things happen. That's the closest UC's been for quite some time. 41-36, pass to Grant. Outside to Hawkins, to Gentry. Gentry takes it in, flips back to Hawkins, lets it go. He didn't, he wasn't in good position. He was falling away. John, and part of the reason the Bearcats have fallen back into a zone is because they don't believe the Xavier guards can knock down the three-point shots. As Lizelle Durden knocks one down, this game is a three-point ball game. We've seen teams starting with Dayton do it last week. They made Musketeers shoot from outside, and they're going to have to do it again tonight. 41-38, Xavier with the lead. Let's take a break. When you shop at Kroger, the savings can take a... Forty-one thirty-eight. Xavier's lead is disappearing. Although this one, Tyrese Walker prevented some damage. Durden with a great athletic play to get the ball back on his shoulder. And look at Tyrese come from nowhere up, almost on top of the block for a 
Xavier's fifth block of the night. There you see the MCC block leaders. Brian Grant and Tyrese Walker, third and fourth in the league. And you always have some surprises in these shootouts, Gary. And Jackson Juleson is leading UC now with nine points. Here's a guy we probably wondered whether we were going to see him tonight. That's but right. The pressure has come in. And the Bearcats are on a 7-0 run. Bob Huggins must have had a fiery halftime speech. Hawkins to Tyrese. Tyrese and knocked away inside Bostick with a nice bit. And right in front of us, Damon Flint came after it. Just couldn't reach it. Tell you, the Bearcats are much more aggressive this half. Musketeer ball, but they only have 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Gentry brings it in, eight seconds. Sykes to Tyrese Walker, six seconds. Move it into Grant. The ball is knocked away and stolen by UC. And Flint commits the charge against Gentry as he brings it over half court. And it'll go the Musketeers' way. And there you see Damon Flynn. He kind of patted Steve Gentry. Both of them played against each other in high school. Steve at Withrow, Damon at Woodward. Jeff Massey reports into the Musketeers' lineup. So it's Massey and Gentry, Walker, Hawkins, and Grant. A little bit of a quicker lineup here now for the Musketeers. Pass into Grant. Grant goes over Jolson too hard. Good defense by Jolson forced him to change that shot. Flint to Burton. Burton pulls up. Got it. Three. That will get the Bearcat fans up and running. Well, Jamal Walker said at halftime it's 0-0. Zero to zero. Well, it really is now. 41-41 to 41 as we hit the 17-minute mark of the second half. And the momentum clearly is with the Bearcats. Hawkins outside to Massey. Massey brings it back out. And John, the Musketeers are having trouble with this 2-3 zone. Gentry way across to Massey. Ten seconds on the shot clock. He brings it and loses it and gets fouled as he goes up with the ball. And it's on Jolson. mentioned that the Bearcats are truly aggressive here in the second half. It's awful difficult to do that when you're playing a zone, but they're managing to move their feet. Look at the help here. Jackson Jolson rotates over. Fouls Jeff Massey with the body. Jolson comes out and gets a nice round of applause from the Bearcat fans who are here. Gave him a big lift. He had two block shots. He changed even Brian Grant's shot quite a bit. Bearcats on a 10-0 run without the services of D'Antonio Wingfield. There you see Coach Larry Harrison talking to Jackson Juleson. Juleson who's sitting right next to Wingfield. Massey finally gets the Musketeers on the board in the second half. 42-41, they edge back in front. Bostick guarded by Walker. Turns, looks for help, gets Durden. Durden now throws down to Flint. Flint pulls up close, off the glass, too hard. Boston goes up at a whistle. He's going to go to the line. Curtis Bostick, great follow-up. The Musketeers, part of the reason they've had trouble in this half is because they haven't made any baskets in order to get into their pressure defense. That time they got into the press. But the Bearcats handled it, attacked it. Got a good shot by Flynn, and Curtis Bostick followed up with a stick back. And that's a tough position if you're a defender. Bostick has, like, springs for legs. You know he's going to spring up there at some point and let it go, and all you can do is wait and hope you don't follow him too hard. Bostick gives the Bearcats a two-point lead. 44, 42, 16 and a half minutes to go. Sears is into the lineup now for the Musketeers. Massey fires to the side, rims it out. Could have been a big basket for Xavier there had he connected. This is Durden on the wing to Burton. Musketeers continue to play tough defense. Burton fires, no good, rebound Grant. Here come the Musketeers in the other direction. Massey from the side. Comes in and out. Bounce pass into Grant, and it was a good one. It's going to go stay uh, with, the, uh, with the Musketeers. The 
You can see this is a tough game on the coaches. If you just put the camera on them one time after another, you'd see two guys who work hard for their money. Boy, and two guys that have earned their money, done an absolutely great job for both programs. Pass into Walker, and I'll tell you what, he has trouble just inbounding the ball. The Bearcats, very, very tough on defense now. Gentry, dribbling in, fires it over to Massey. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Sears to Massey in the corner. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds, Massey will fire, and he did the same exact thing. The old rim rattler that fell out. Damon Flint from 12, no good. They crash in the boards for the Bearcats. Sears comes away with the ball, and he gets trapped, but gets it away to Grant. Grant up court to Walker. Walker to Massey. Up to Walker, and they can't do the alley -oop. Musketeers caught the Bearcats flat-footed, but couldn't convert. Gregor just into the lineup is on the wing. Over to Durden. Durden turns the corner, comes inside, now reverses himself to Gregor. Gregor, one fake, goes up. Can't do it. Looked like Jacobs hit the ball out of bounds. Larry Sykes ready to come back in for the Musketeers. Pete Mike Gillen Harris ready to come back in for the Bearcats. Pete Gillen wants the Musketeers to run motion. Out of bounds, another turnover. It's the third turnover for the Musketeers this half. Have not been able to execute against that pesky Bearcat zone. And we had said at halftime how well the Musketeers have handled the ball. There was UC making the mistakes with 10 no turnovers for the first half. Well, you know the Bearcats saw the last game that we had, the, the Dayton Flyer game, where the Musketeers just didn't handle their zone at all. And we assumed that the, the Bearcats would show some zone tonight, and so far it's been real successful for them. Xavier Steele doesn't have a field goal in the second half. And we're five and a half minutes into this half. Flint into the corner to Jacobs. Sykes is now into the game for UC. Sherwin Anderson also, or Sykes in for Xavier. Sherwin Anderson also comes in for the Musketeers. The air ball goes the Musketeers' way. This is Anderson. Anderson inside. Goes up with the left hand. And a foul is called on the Bearcats. Musketeers with good defensive pressure. Durden took a bad shot, had two guys hold on to him, and there you see Sherwin Anderson coming down the other end. That's his second personal foul. Draws a foul for Mike Harris. If you're just joining us, Xavier led this game 10 points at half, and in the last six minutes, UC has turned it around. They lead now 44 to 42, 14.06 left in this second half of play. John, you mentioned the Musketeers don't have a field goal this half. They're 0 for 6 from the field. Sherwin Anderson, the southpaw, drains one. It's tied up again at 44, 14.06. comes inside. The ball is knocked away, but the Bearcats will own it. Bob Huggins trying to calmly tell the official that he was, the player was fouled all the way down the court. Burton inbound the ball. As we move under the 14-minute mark, Flint takes it outside, guarded by little Sherwin Anderson. And uh, Flint moves in on him, but Anderson... He was moving alongside of him. He gets hit with a foul. First personal on Anderson, third on the Musketeers. Flint to Burton. Burton has it knocked away, stolen by Anderson, who then is able to save it. It's kicked around, and the Bearcats get it back. This is Flint to Burton. Burton fires three-pointer. No good. Tyrese Walker knocks it outside. And look at this scrambling going on by both teams. Andrew Massey almost stole it that time. Jacobs down half low. 
And this is hard to keep up with. <laughs> what a possession. I wouldn't want the play-by-play -play job at this point, John. I'm not sure I do. Watch the activity on this possession. Back to real action. The inbounds goes. But a turnover by the Bearcats. quickly down, tried to move it inside to go to Sears, and the ball was kicked by the Bearcats. Brian Grant coming in now for Xavier. Curtis Bostick reporting back in in place of Mike Harris for UC. A lot of things working in that first half for the Musketeers, not working right now. They have to seek some other solutions. All the turnovers, Musketeers with three, Bearcats with just two. Their Bearcats are taking a lot better care of the basketball here in the second half. Anderson outside over to Massey. Massey moves in. Now into Sykes. Nice pass, and he gets the roll this time. Good deal of ball movement there by the Musketeers, and Larry Sykes completes the play. And he had to have a little touch on that one because he was moving. 46-44. Xavier regains the lead. Gregor takes it across half court to Flint. Now Damon backs it up. He's guarded by Jeff Massey. To Gregor. He's picked up closely by Sears. And Massey steals it away. It's a foot race. Massey down. Lays it in. Gregor was on Massey's back the whole way. But Massey found a way to finish. Bob Huggins wants the timeout as Xavier zips back in front. 48 to 44, 12 and a half minutes to go in the game. We'll be right back. Xavier back up by four, and they're doing the same things they did in the second half all of a sudden, Gary. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. Jeff Massey gets a steal, and look at the composure he has. He had two Bearcats right on his back. we managed to finish off the fast break. We want to remind you to stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game when DJ Gary and I will be selecting the Skyline Chili Star of the Game. Tonight we'll be selecting a star from each team, and with that selection, a $500 donation will be made to the General Scholarship Fund of each school by Skyline Chili, the official sponsors of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. Both teams back on the floor, and... We still have not seen D'Antonio Winkfield in the second half, so that foot must be giving him a lot of problems. Jacobs on the right side, turns, goes up on Grant, and a foul is called, and looks like Brian Grant will be tagged with his third foul. And John Jacobs is just a much improved basketball player. Look at the moves inside. He never had the ability to do that last year. He's worked, lost a little bit of weight. He's a lot more mobile, and that's a big foul on Brian Grant. Jacobs has been a very pleasant surprise, really one of the more consistent Bearcats playing this year. 48-45, the lead is three. 12-23 to go in this game. Anderson cross to Sears. Sears will try from the wing, and he'll hit. Pete Sears has been a pretty much of a defensive specialist for the Musketeers, but he showed a good offensive touch. Jacobs on the side to Burton. Burton picked up there by Massey. Burton brings it around into the paint, flips it up in the air, and a foul is called. And it'll be another foul on the Musketeers. Looks like maybe Larry Sykes. Burton is just a fantastic offensive player. Take a look at this ability. Uses his body. Not only can he shoot the lights out from three-point range, he really does a nice job of penetration. He had 24 points against Dayton. That's his career high. But he's been in double figures 10 games this year. So he's been pretty consistent as well. And I asked Bob Huggins about him and, and, and how he's contributed. And all Huggins would say, Bob would say, is, well, he's improved on defense. And that's really the criteria for, for playing on this team, as it really is for Xavier, too. If you perform on defense, you're going to get the play, and then you're going to get the score. 50-47, Musketeers. Sears over to Sherwin Anderson. 
to Massey. Massey inside to Sykes. Sykes goes up over a man, and a foul is called again, so we're getting into a foul shooting contest right now. John, again, one of the reasons that the Bearcats are playing this zone is because they're, they're kind of taunting Musketeer guards to shoot the ball up from outside. They don't think they, they're consistent from three-point range. And what the Musketeers need to do is get the ball inside to Brian Grant and Larry Sykes. There you see Larry Sykes has 10 points because he's getting the ball inside. Darnell Burton also has his third personal foul now for the Bearcats. You see Bobby Gonzalez, assistant coach, talking to Pete Gillen. Sykes toes the line and misses the second. Grant keeps it alive and grabs the rebound. He took a little bit of a chance. He could have got his fourth foul with over the back. But Pass into Sykes, and he's not able to grab it, and then he commits the foul. As he was, he was over the back on that one. Musketeers did a nice job in the first half on the offensive backboard. Here you see Brian Grant got, got another offensive rebound. Could have been called for his fourth foul, but Larry Sykes finally is called. Jackson Juleson back into the game now for the Bearcats, and what a game he's played. Bostick looking for help in the corner to Burton. Burton cross to Durden. Durden fires away, can't get it. Rebound, Juleson puts it up there twice. Two more rebounds and two more points for Jackson Juleson. That's 11. Made a huge difference here in the second half for the Bearcats. Hold up for a second as Tyrese Walker reports into the Musketeers lineup. Pete Sears leaving. Pete Sears took an elbow to the to one of his eyes. During the 11 minute mark, 51 49. Musketeers pass to Anderson. Anderson. Wheels on the right side, flips it up there, no good, rebound Bearcats. Once Curtis again, Bostick. Once again, Jolson made Anderson change his shot. This is Durden, pulls up, got a three. He can knock it down all day long when he's open from outside. UC back into the lead, 52-51. And that is one of the prettiest outside shots you're ever going to see. Nice arc, nice release. Sykes from the side, re rebound Grant, Grant puts it in. That's one of the things that happens when Larry Sykes get in, gets involved offensively. He frees up Brian Grant. The Bearcats and Musketeers now trading baskets. Juleson inside. Durden fires away for 14. No good rebound. Massey. Massey brings it out to Anderson. Anderson on a three on two. Pulls up out of control there from the base, or from the uh, foul line. He really left himself with not much to do, Gary. No, that's kind of the way that, that Pete Gillen wanted to play. He got, got into a little bit of a slowdown here early on in the second half. We saw the last four possessions, the Musketeers have gotten the ball up tempo again. Anderson hoping to draw somebody, but uh, nobody was there as you see Bostic grabbing that missed shot. As they come down, hurry it down, and on the wing, Lazelle Durden, boom. You mentioned the, the style that Lazelle Durden has, one of the best shooters in the country, and he can purely light it up. He had 39 points earlier on against uh, Eastern Tennessee. And the coach down there said they threw everybody but the kitchen sink at him, and he he just kept on scoring. Had a couple of games this year in which he's hit eight three-pointers. Sherwin Anderson connects on both of them, and you, Xavier's back into the lead, 55-52. Anderson leaves after connecting on both of those, and Michael Hawkins into the game for Xavier. Defense applied by the Musketeers. Burton wants help. And they're going to get the UC's turning it over because they can't get the ball in. Try to get a timeout, but the rule is it has to go. You have to call a timeout before three seconds are off that five-second count. The referee felt like it was more than three seconds, and it's going to be Xavier's basketball. Gentry to inbound the ball. Eric Edwards now into the ball game for Xavier. Hawkins bounce pass into Sykes, having a hard time holding on to that. 
and UC's just very active with their hands and with their defense. One of the things you cannot do against UC is with the big guys is fumble a pass or put the ball on the floor because they're great. They do a great job of collapsing on the big people. 55-52, Xavier, 9.55 left in this one. Xavier had a 10-point lead at halftime. UC has since retaken the lead a couple of times, and Xavier took it right back. Julson inside to Durden, back outside to Burton. Burton now charges right up the middle to Durden, over to Flint. Great action here. Bostic outside to Durden. To Burton, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Guarded by Gentry, over to Flint, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Flint breaks into 15-footer, beats Julson, and he's fouled. That's a, Damon Flint does a super job of pulling up, looking like he's going to take a jump shot. You see Michael Hawkins go up with him. He catches the Musketeers flat-footed, gets the ball into Jolson. Really should have made that play, should have finished it off. Jolson seeing the most minutes of his young career. He's also seeing the most points. He's got a career high, 11 points. It's Larry Sykes' third foul. He's looking down at the bench. He doesn't want Coach Gillen to take him out. He's having fun out there. Brian Grant also with three points. He's on the bench right, three fouls. He's on the bench right now. 55-53, 9.19 to go. Gentry looking things over as he comes down. Walker. That's Darnell Borton with his hands up. Massey to Eric Edwards. Back to Massey. And again, UC daring Xavier to shoot from outside. To Massey. He lets it go. He's long and he's way off the mark. But Tyrese Walker comes around and hits it. What a pretty shot. Big play. Usually we're so used to seeing Tyrese explode. That time he used a little different approach. 57-53. This is Flint working against Walker. Looking for the screen. Now Flint breaks to the right. Hits it on the run. Flint is so versatile. to do a lot of different things. He's so big that he can shoot over a lot of the guards. He, that time he posted up Michael Hawkins at the free throw line and just took a jumper over the top. Sykes inside against Julson. Fires back out to Massey. Over to Gentry. Gentry to Edwards. Edwards from the side puts it up. He's too long. Rebound pulled away by Burton. Burton showing his jumping ability and his strength. As you see now tries either to tie it up or go ahead. They trail by two. Under eight minutes. Grant gets off the bench. He's ready to come back in for the Musketeers. Flint gaining more confidence. Had been in somewhat of a drought. Playing well here tonight. Burton fires a three. Tyrese Walker with good defense right in his face. But Burton showing you what kind of offensive player he is. Drilled the three. Walker from the side. Can't get it. Sykes with the rebound. Goes back up with it and he gets fouled. Keith Gregor ready to come back into the game. Also, Brian Grant will, and Burton has kind of signaled he wanted to come out, and he will leave the game, and in comes Gregor for him. And Antonio Wingfield is up. He's going to be playing his first minutes of the second half. Wingfield replaces Curtis Bostick. As we mentioned at halftime, Wingfield had only two first-half points. Very unusual for him. But just his presence in the game is, is going to make it tough for the Musketeers, especially as well as Damon Flint has been playing now. John Jacobs into the lineup as Bob Huggins makes some big changes. Jackson Jolson leaves. You mentioned the change, changes Wingfield makes when he comes in the ballgame. When he was out with his foot injury for three games against Austin P and Chicago State and Robert Morris, the Bearcats were even in rebound. When he came back his last two games, they out-rebounded their opponent by 22 in each game. That gives you an idea. He had 18 rebounds himself in both of those games. So he's an incredible talent when he's healthy. Larry Sykes misses the first, hits the second. 
We have a timeout here at the Cincinnati Gardens. It's all tied up at 58 apiece. We'll be right back. Said it was going to be close. Boy, they were right. 58 apiece with 7.27 to go in this one. The Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. We want to remind you about our next telecast coming up this Saturday against the Evansville Purple Aces live from Roberts Stadium in Evansville. That game will be on at 8.30 Saturday, immediately preceded by Getting Ready for Lillehammer, our Winter Olympic preview special. That's at 8 o'clock, followed by Evansville and Xavier. And that Olympic preview special, you're going to get a bird's eye view of ski jumping. We're going to get in a bobsled and go down a <laughs> run for a mile. And You're going to do that? I'm going to do that. <laughs> You're going to get used to saying Lillehammer, too. Lillehammer, yeah. Six lead changes for the game and six ties. we got a great one on our hands. 7-17 to go. Musketeers try to trap Damon Flint. Can't do it. Jacobs with the ball now over to Gregor. 58 apiece, nearing the seven-minute mark in the second half. Lead has changed hands several times here in the second half. Jacobs up top to Flint. Nine seconds left for the shot clock into Winkfield. Winkfield turns around, goes up, can't hit it. But Durden grabs the rebound and follows. Zell Durden snuck around Jeff Massey. Those are the kind of points that, that kill you after a good defensive possession. You see by two, 60, 58. You see Anderson it. tries the middle and loses the ball. Gregor grabs it. Good aggressive play by Keith Gregor. Bearcats have stayed in that 2-3 zone the entire second half. Flint working against Anderson. Over to Gregor. Gregor worked on by Anderson. Has the ball knocked away for a moment. Gets it back and goes in with it. Big play. Gregor playing both sides of the court. Causes a big turnover. Then found himself with no one in front of him between him and the basket, decided to put it up and he's fouled. I think they're going to get Tyrese Walker. Michael Hawkins comes in. Larry Sykes comes in. Sykes with three personal fouls. And you see with its largest lead since the early moments of this game, they now lead by four, 62-58, and Keith Gregor can add to it. high off Bostic tried it was knocked out of bounds or you gotta like Bostic as a player you see Bob Huggins clapping for him hustling all over the court great athlete doing a great job for the Bearcats he could have been a great defensive back yeah he sure looks like it doesn't he Hawkins on the wing moves inside to Gentry Gentry to Grant back outside to Gentry Hawkins up top to Gentry, he lets it fly, got it a three. That's not the kind of shot that Musketeers are looking for, especially from Steve Gentry. But they'll take the results. Musketeers trail by one, 62-61. Flint guarded by Hawkins up top. To Gregor on the wing, over to Jacobs. To Durden, to Bostick on the side, guarded by Sykes. Five and a half minutes to go in this one. UC by one. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Down to five seconds. Flint inside, two seconds, one second. Jacobs doesn't know the time, and they let the clock run out. That is a big defensive play for the Musketeers, and the fans realize what a great... 35 seconds of defense the Musketeers just put on. The guards knew exactly what the case was. They got the ball into Jacobs, but apparently he hadn't glanced at the clock. He wasn't sure how much time was left. Xavier now trying to retake the lead. They trail by one. We hit the five-minute mark. Hawkins from the side, rims out. Rebound, Flint. Boy, Michael Hawkins has had a tough time shooting the ball of late. The Bearcats know it. They're going to let him shoot till he can prove that he can knock one down. Jacobs on the side to Burton. Burton right through. Throws it up there. And they come down with it. And it's Tyrese Walker winning the battle. There's two big-time jumpers going after it there. Gentry pulls up. Too hard. Rebound. And I'm surprised there's not a foul there. Boston comes away with it. Looks like 
Bostic almost got level. Flint dribbling on the wing. Xavier's had a couple of chances to come down and grab the lead back. They haven't been able to do it. Durden to Jacobs. Back to Durden. Breaks inside to Bostic. Bostic from the side. Ten second shot clock. Durden fired. Boom. And I'll tell you, he had to shoot over a mountain. Brian Grant was all over. Durden with a good arch and buried it. The UC lead is back up to four. 3.55 to go. Pass inside to Grant and some moving around there between Grant and Bostic. And I think Curtis will be called for the foul. We mentioned before, Bostic always draws that toughest defensive assignment. He's doing a heck of a job on Brian Grant here in the second half. Even in a zone, he's matching up with Grant, not letting the ball go inside. Second foul on Curtis Bostic. So for all that mixing it up, he only has the second foul. Jacob sits down onto the bench. D'Antonio Wingfield back in for the Bearcats. a kid that quit basketball his junior year in high school that rejuvenated his senior year and uh, never dreamed that he'd be even in, in possibility of getting getting into the NBA. Yeah, pregame show we talked about it and he talked about his uncle John Richard who had such an impact on him being able to play basketball. 65-63 UC, 350 left. Stay with us. Cincinnati Gardens, John Popovich along with Gary Massa, 65-63, UC with the lead, and here we're watching how Lizelle Durden just gets that ball in a quick release, and like you say, he was covered. He was covered. Brian Grant came out to help out, and that's a that's a mountain to shoot over. And Lizelle Durden knocked it up and, and uh, knew it was in as soon as he shot it. There you see three-point field goal percentage in the second half. Xavier much better than the first half. Musketeers just 12%. Musketeers grabbing away on the inbounds. Grant comes away with the ball. Gentry to Sykes. Over to Tyrese. Now they try to set up some sort of offense as they give UC Fitz on the inbounds. They trail by two. Hawkins to Gentry. Inside the Tyrese Walker makes the move inside off the glass. This game is tied. Antonio Wingfield bringing it up the sideline. He just doesn't look real steady on that foot. 3.15 left. Durden inside. Too short. Grant fights for the rebound. Hawkins comes away with it. To Tyrese Walker. Walker outside the Gentry. Back to Tyrese. Looking inside for Grant. Finds Sykes. Sykes goes. Yes. Good choice by Tyrese Walker. He had a chance to try to force it into Brian Grant. He saw Larry Sykes was open. Made a good decision. Xavier retakes the lead. Sykes working on Wingfield as he takes it down and fires it up there. Misses. Gentry comes away. Gentry to Hawkins. Hawkins backs it up a little bit. UC on the defense, and it's going to go to UC. They have the possession arrow. Pete Gillen was trying to tell Michael Hawkins to settle down. Let's pull it back out. And I think there's a natural inclination. You hear that crowd picking up. You know you just scored <laughs> a couple of baskets. You want to charge in there and do something, but you still have to use the right judgment. Yeah, I mean, you, you can never fault the guy for trying to make something happen, but uh, that time Michael maybe should have brought it back out. D'Antonio Wingfield sits down. Curtis Bostic back into the ball game. Jackson Juleson back in for the Bearcats. This is Flint working on by Hawkins. Link to Burton. Burton's been fabulous tonight. Hawkins around Grant. Bass thrown away by Hawkins. Hawkins brings it down the left side looking for help. Now he backs it out over to Gentry. They slow it down. 2-10 left. Xavier with a two-point lead. They fire inside. UC takes it away. Jackson Jolson got a hand on it. Burton finds an opening as he shifts position and ties this game. 
67 all, 148 left. In 1990, we did this game, and we went to overtime. But right now, we have a timeout on the on the court, and it is tied at 67. John, you got to give the Bearcats all the credit in the world. Don Tonio Wingfield's out. Doesn't it looks like he's hurt? Had two points the entire game, and the Bearcats had fought, scratched, and clawed to, to a tie here, 67 all. Mike McCall, our crack statistician, tells us this is the eighth tie of the ball game. And Pete Genovas, our associate producer, tells us that 48 hours will immediately follow this game. 67, 67. 145 to go. Again, UC jumped on top of this one, but then Xavier on a 15 to nothing run. They led by 10 points at the half, and all they've done is uh, take this lead back and forth in the second half. I want to remind you to stay tuned to Channel 9 tonight. After the game, we'll be presenting 48 hours with a report on the earthquake in Los Angeles and the cleanup and recovery after the quake. That'll be followed by Channel 9 News with Carol Williams and Clyde Gray, Bob Allen with all the weather, and Brett Haber will have highlights of this game and the others with all the scores. After that, keep it right here for The Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, Dave has actor Bruno Kirby and singer Aaron Neville as his guest. That's 48 hours. Then the Channel 9 News followed by Letterman tonight on Channel 9. Aaron Neville, he was, uh, I think, a space eater in his time if he played basketball. 67-67, Bearcats. Xavier comes out with Massey and Gentry. Walker, Sykes, and Grant. UC counters with Juleson and Flint. Durden, Bostick, and Darnell Burton. Those are the five. They've been in a good deal of the time tonight. John, if I'm the Musketeers, i got to look into Brian Grant. He's our go-to guy. The problem is getting the ball inside to him, and that has stymied the Musketeers on more than one occasion here in that second half. Great job defensively by the Bearcats. We'll see how long they stay in the zone if they finish the game in it. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Eight seconds. Massey working against Flint. Massey fakes, goes up. Hits from outside. Big bucket. It's just two, just inside the three-point line. 112 to go, 69-67. Musketeers. Burton working against Walker. This crowd getting noisier by the second. 59 seconds left. Flynn takes it up top. Flynn thinks about it to Burton. He fires a three. Misses, but a foul on Tyrese Walker. It's going to be three shots. Darnell Burton is an unbelievable shooter. That's Tyrese Walker's fourth foul. He's not only an unbelievable shooter, but he is so quick with his release. Tyrese Walker knew he had to get out and defend. He sure didn't want to cause a foul. We don't see this too often, but again, Burke goes to the line to shoot three. Like the old, use, or the old NBA rule, three to make two. And he's... Uh, Shoots 78% from the free throw line. And he drains the first two. And that ties this game back up at 69 apiece. 51 seconds. <laughs> this is the second, but Boston grabs the rebound. And a foul is called. And it's on Jackson Juleson. That's Jackson Jolson's fourth. And they all walk down the other way for the Musketeers to shoot the ball this time. Here you see the third free throw. Darnell Burton misses it. Looked like, looked like he was pushing off. Sure did. And Larry Sykes arms. Larry Sykes, I was going to say, he got in there awfully quick. And here's a guy who stepped up 14 points tonight. Wasn't able to knock that one down. 48 seconds left. It's tied at 69. UC with possession. Durden breaks inside to Burton. Burton worked into Durden, working against Gentry, reverses his field. Comes back. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. To Flint. Flint moves inside, now backs up. 10 seconds on the shot clock. To Burton. 
five seconds on the shot clock. Burke moving in, goes up. He's going to miss it. Rebound, Flint. Flint goes up and hits it with 14 seconds left. Damon Flint has come up big. He's got nine rebounds tonight. That's a career high, and that was a big one. Here's what it comes down to, fans. Nine seconds left on the clock. Tyrese Walker to Massey. Massey kicks it back to Tyrese. Tyrese throws from the side. He's short. Fred follows. This game is tied with one second. One second to go. Looks like we got overtime on our hands, John, but there is one second left. And UC calls a timeout with one second to go. And, oh, my. Bob Huggins was trying to call for over the back, but he's going to round his troops up. He knows he's got one second. Tyrese Walker throws up from way downtown, and look at Brian Grant. That was a big play. He had the, the mindset to see that that ball wasn't going to hit the rim at all. A lot of times you want to get the guy in your back, and you're going to box out, and he would have never made that, but he saw that. Brian Grant, 14 rebounds, 12 points. And there you see it from the upper angle. And again, it was fairly obvious from where we're sitting that that ball was off the mark and going to be short. It's not as easy to see on the court. Brian Grant came up with a huge play there, was able to put it in, and we're tied at 71 with one tick left on the clock. And Bob Huggins trying to plan strategy somewhere between that mass of bodies. Pete Gillen doing the same thing over there. Forcing this thing into overtime. One of the things Pete Gillen is going to tell his team is obviously you cannot foul under these circumstances. You don't want to put any of the Bearcats to the foul line, but you have to provide some pressure so that the musket or so that the Bearcats can't throw that long pass. You remember the, the NCAA tournament game to Christian Leitner. That's the type of play that Bob Huggins is probably going to set up. Try to get one of his bigger people to, to collect the ball maybe around the free throw line on a long pass. So we'll We'll see. The important thing for the Musketeers is not the foul. The important thing for the Bearcats is try to get a shot off inside the three-point circle. Let's see if UC has a Leitner on its team tonight. Burton will inbound. Grant is guarding him along the baseline. Burton looking long. Fires down to Juleson, but the ball is knocked away. And Sykes throws it up. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to overtime. Well, it's been a tremendous basketball game to this point. Not a surprising one. A lot of things happened that we thought would. Both teams pouring their heart out on the floor. Fans are really uh, getting a chance to get their money's worth tonight. No one has fouled out of this game, so both Pete Gillen and Bob Huggins come into overtime with everyone available. 71-71, and we go to five minutes of overtime. Musketeers' first overtime of the year, and I'll tell you, one of the things that's got to come up big is the fact that Antonio Winfield doesn't appear like he's, he's healthy enough to play basketball right now. The Bearcats will miss him in this overtime period. Once more, here's a look at the basket that tied the game. Again, you see the clock ticking down. The pass, the uh, well, it wasn't a pass, but it turned out to be a pass from Tyrese Walker. And there, Brian Grant was able to pick it up, just kind of flip it in. And you could see two of the Bearcats hit the floor. It looked like Steve Gentry came up from behind, caused some problems. They tried to box him out and forgot a little bit about uh, Brian Grant. Again, we had uh, we were telecasting the game in 1990, the Crosstown Shootout, and that is the last time that Xavier was able to win this game. And that, of course, is when Jamal Walker hit a game winner with just a couple of seconds left on the clock, and uh, that was also an overtime game. Since then, UC has won three straight games. John, I think the most important part, of the reason this rivalry has become so so big time was was the fact that over the last 14 years the series record is seven to seven prior to that it was 22 wins for the bearcats and just two for for the musketeers so the musketeers have evened it up quite a bit i was wondering if we had the provident bank slam cam available to us on this one and we do and there you see brian grant reach out and then come up with it that is the point that has set this game into overtime musketeers come out with grant sykes Gentry, Massey, and Walker. UC counters with Flint, Burton, Durden, Bostick, and Jackson Zilton. So, same guys remain in the game, and Xavier begins with the tip. That 71 points is the most given up by a Musketeer team this year in the Gardens. Tyrese Walker bringing it back out. 
into Sykes. Sykes, one dribble back out to Gentry. Gentry quickly to Massey. Massey fires. Got a three. From the identical point that got the Musketeers back in the game to begin with. Little jump shot. Quick release. The college basketball championship of Cincinnati, also known as the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. And it's in overtime. Xavier takes the lead. Burton tried to counter with a three. Can't do it. Grant rebound to Massey. Massey dribbling ahead. The Bearcats are looking any way they can to get the ball in Darnell Burton's hands. Our time a double screen to get him a shot. Under four minutes to go in this overtime period. Grant on the side to Massey. Massey inside to Sykes. Sykes to Tyrese and blocked by Juleson beautifully. Grant from the side. Can't do it. Sykes with a rebound. Can't do it. Too hard. Bostick rips away the rebound. Musket Musketeers clawing on the offensive board but couldn't get a stick back to fall. So many chances, so few points. The crowd thought Flynn traveled on that one. Burton picked up by Massey. Three and a quarter left. Rebound. <laughs> Tyrese Walker hit the deck. Thought there should have been a whistle. Flint goes up and is called for a charge. A lot of action under the boards. See Tyrese got pushed underneath. Larry Sykes positioned himself beautifully to take that charge. As Xavier heads down, they lead by three. 3.10 three left in the overtime. Massey to Gentry. Gentry a three! Steve Gentry shoots just 19% from three-point range, and he's hit two big ones here late in the ballgame. 2.53 left. Pressure by the Musketeers. This is Burton bringing it across, and Gentry, or uh, make it Sykes, gets called for the foul. Came very close to drawing another charge there. That's a big foul, fourth personal foul on Larry Sykes. And you see the Musketeers trying to trap at half court. Got to be impressed with Darnell Burton. He doesn't play like a freshman at all. You know, when you when you look at the guards that they have, Lazell Durden, who's, who's banged up a little bit, with a had a concussion a few days back. Darnell Burton, Wingfield likes to shoot it up from outside. Bearcats are going to be an awful strong club for a number of years to come. The lead is four, 77-73, 2:39 left. Xavier on offense. Gentry up top, guarded by Flint to Massey. Way outside. Grant comes out to help. To Gentry. They're milking the clock. It's down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Inside, Sykes turns, blocked by Flint, and grabbed by the Bearcats. Damon Flint starting to play like he did in high school in that center position, mixing it up with the big guys. Anticipating the move by Larry Sykes very well. Nearing two minutes. Bearcats down by four. Burton outside to Bostick. Bostick to Durden. It's a three. Boy, Durden and Burton both spread the defense out so much. Both such great shooters. And Pete Gillen wants a timeout. A six-point lead has evaporated. It's only one now. 77 to 76. The Musketeers with the lead. Only 1.49 to go. <laughs> there you see Coach... Gillen meeting with his crew, Bobby Gonzalez, Conti Stamos, and Louis Orr, of course, from Withrow, Syracuse, and New York Knicks fame. We saw uh, Lazelle Durden, his three-point prowess. There you go. Knocks a long one down. That's his fifth three of the game. He's got 21 points. And it's such nice, compact motion. There doesn't seem to be much that will flaw his shooting mentioned before he had 39 points against Austin P. That coach said and, and he's shown flashes of brilliance. He had a uh, real problem with sprained wrists about three games ago. 
And then, of course, we heard about it in the paper that he had a concussion where he was vomiting. They had to take him to the hospital. He, he really, he only had 12 points in the last two games, but he appears like he's back on track right now. And one of the things the Musketeers are going to have to do to win this game in the last minute and 49, play defense on the perimeter. Difficult to do because it's so, because Burton and Durden spread the floor so much. Reminder that immediately following this game, Channel 9 will join. CBS is 48 hours in progress. Be quite a few updates there on the earthquake situation in Southern California. This is fun. Those people out there are in a life and death situation. So 48 hours will cover all the bases tonight on uh, coming up right after tonight's game. 77-76. Xavier with the lead, 149 left. We're in overtime. First overtime for both teams. I don't think the fans mind. Tyrese Walker up top. To Massey. Massey on the side to Walker. Walker over to Gentry. And back to Massey. He's picked up there by Gregor. He's just into the lineup. Tyrese Walker back to Massey. Again, letting that clock run down. It's seven seconds down the shot clock. The Tyrese Walker moves in. Goes up. Locked once again. And you see coming up with the clutch blocks. Jolson again. Coming up big inside. Another block shot. And it seems like it's a case more than anything else of... Xavier working that ball in, and just you see, understanding that either Sykes, Grant, or uh, Tyrese Walker are going to make that move to the basket, that Xavier doesn't want to take that shot from outside. Um, and you know Bob Huggins would love to play man-to-man -man defense, and you know that if he's going to employ any kind of zone, it's going to be very aggressive, and that's what it's been. Real nice weak side help, and Jackson Jolson, I tell you right now, so far, is a real candidate for our star of the game. Let's try J.J. here, Jackson Jolson on Tyrese Walker, and he goes up there and Juleson actually doesn't look like he gets up that high but I'll tell you what he has long arms and like you said he's just a tree he's a tower 6'9 long long arms there's a kid that had a little bit of some kind of infection last year didn't play a whole lot his senior year but has come back and gained his strength back and has played more and more as the season has gone on for the Bearcats 113 left, and uh, no one has left. 77-76, Xavier with a one-point lead, but UC will be coming down with the basketball. John, here's an important point. Both teams have used up their timeouts. No timeouts left for either club. Minute 13 left. There you see, really, the only person who is in foul trouble is Jackson Juleson. Perhaps meaningless unless we go to a second overtime. Walker and Sykes for Xavier, both holding four fouls at this point. You see if the Musketeer experience comes into play here as both teams with no timeouts left. Could come down to a point where a Steve Gentry or a Tyrese Walker, one of the seniors, may have to make a decision without calling a timeout. Burton into Durden. He's picked up in the backcourt by Gentry. Gentry guarding Durden. Hit the one minute mark to Burton. 12 seconds on the shot clock to Flint. Flint turns to the baseline. No good rebound, Grant. Grant protects the ball and over to Massey. Bob Huggins is furious on the sidelines. He wanted the foul call there. They isolated Damon Flint down low against Jeff Massey. Had the mismatch. The foul was not called. Xavier once again holding back and watching that shot clock disintegrate. 33 seconds on the game clock, 15 on the shot clock. Gentry looking for something to happen inside to Massey. Massey on the side. Yeah! That's a big time shot. Four point lead now for the Musketeers. 21 seconds to go. Durden fires no good. Rebound Walker. The Musketeers and Walker gets fouled by Darnell Burton. Oh my, Jeff Massey, we've been through his ups and downs, but from the corner there, he may have made Xavier history by hitting that one. Two-time junior college player of the year, and I'll tell you, he's never been in a game like this. Big time shot from way downtown. Massey hit a three to begin this overtime period, and... Uh, as the clock wound down to around 25 seconds, hit that one to give Xavier a four-point lead. Walker tries to up it. He does to five. That's 15 points for Tyrese Walker. That 
want to mention that that three for Jeff Massey gave him 20 for the ball game. Walker with his second. Six-point lead, only five seconds to go. Xavier will contest things, but not foul. Durden works down, fires a three, a little bit short. Sykes goes out of bounds, saves it, keeps it alive. Here comes Massey, punctuating it. Oh, but he misses. No time left on the clock. And watch Cincinnati Gardens go crazy. An overtime win for the Musketeers. happy about the proceedings. Bob Huggins is upset with the officiating. I don't I don't believe he came out to shake hands. Very possible. I did see Bob Huggins or Pete Gillen go over to the Xavier uh, side of things and uh, he seemed like he came away fairly angry. And there you see the huge crowd of Xavier players, Xavier cheerleaders, Xavier boosters, all gathering around center court, celebrating their first victory in the Crosstown shootout in four years. I'm not sure what happened, but I know Pete Gillen just, met, just motioned me, wasn't real happy with what happened after the game. I don't know whether we caught it on video or... Big, big time play, big time win for the Musketeers. 82-76 is our final score here. Again, Xavier led by 10 points at the halftime. And now they finish with six points. Mike Williams, our uh, sports photographer, is filling us in on what happened. But while we find out, let's go to Dennis Jansen up with our analyst, DJ. Thank you very much, John. We are back with Terry Nelson and with Jamal Walker. Gentlemen, one of the more exciting games we've ever seen here at Cincinnati Gardens. I guess the last time Xavier beat UC was in overtime. You got the winner. What's going through Jeff Massey's mind right now? Uh, great feeling right now. Just a great feeling. When he goes to the locker room, after they say their prayer, they'll just start exploding. But this is a great win for Xavier University. Cincinnati can't hold their heads down because they're playing so well right now also. And here we come with Jeff Massey's three. This is going to put them up. Now, Terry Nelson, why in the world, or how in the world, were they able to get Lozelle Durden open time after time because he kept the Bearcats in this thing? Well, all we ran in practice was getting the shooters open. Lozelle Durden, Darnell Burton, we were just having the guys doing blockers. As you can see right there, Damon Flint does a good job getting them open, hits the three. I mean, when you have Lozelle Durden and Darnell Burton who can hit threes the way they do, you have to get them shots. Do you think youth entered into this at all, or was it just skill, or was it execution? I don't think youth, as you know, the game went overtime has anything to do with it. Uh, experience really didn't play a toll in this game because Jeff Massey was a junior college transfer. He hasn't ex experienced on a Division One level. He doesn't have any. So it just came down to execution and uh, it came down to a last second shot, which was the last second rebound. Damon didn't get the, the, the shot he wanted and they went on to win the game. And it comes down to an 82-76 Xavier win over UC. We have cast our ballots in tonight's Skyline MVPs, the stars of the game. From UC, Lizelle Durden, an absolutely sensational game. He kept them in from three-point range. Our star of the game from Xavier is is Jeff Massey. There's a good look at Lizelle Durden. There's number 30, Jeff Massey, who hit the crucial three to solidify this Xavier win. With these selections, a $500 donation will be made to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. The star of the game is brought to you by Skyline Chili, the official sponsors of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Shootout. I would like to say on behalf of all of our production team, thank you very much to